Right. You take your Bibles and you go to the book of Matthew. I'll tell you a little bit. I'll tell you where just now. I'm going to go to Philippians. I want to read Philippians first. You can write down Philippians. I'll tell you which scriptures in Philippians now. But you go to the book of Matthew. Come on, make this declaration while you are searching for the book of Matthew. Say this with me. Say, my spirit is ready, is receptive. My mind is open. My heart is renewed to receive the word of God that is going to be implanted in me and it's going to benefit me. It's going to work for me. I'm going to be blessed by it in Jesus' name. And blessed am I when I sit down in this house, whether it's in Portable or in this house or in your house because you associate with this ministry, you can be nothing but blessed. Can I have an amen for that one? You better believe it. You better believe it. Right, this morning... Uh, I, I, I've said it to you guys last Sunday and the previous Sunday when I was in Portable. Um, I said to you that there are three messages that I'm stuck with. The first one is the one that we did at the conference and uh, out of the glory and uh, concerning Isaiah. The second one is the one concerning the earth, that the earth will bring forth. And uh, the other one was the one that I did the other day concerning... Um, what was that one? Uh, that was, no, I'm not sure. Obedience, concerning obedience. I think it was obedience. Yeah, then we did obedience. And, uh, but it is as though the Lord does, hasn't released me to carry on with any other teachings except what, what I'm going to share with you again and again and again. So until the Lord releases me and gives me something else to take it to a higher level, or open the word of God for you more. I'm gonna, I'll preach the same thing over and over and over again. Because I'm more obedient to God's voice than I am to man's voice. Because man will put pressure on you to, uh, oh, but you preached that the last three Sundays. Don't you have anything else to preach? No. Why not? Because God didn't tell me to preach anything else. I'm not released to preach anything else. And I'm a servant of God, not a servant of man. I'm a servant of God, not a servant of man. So until God thinks that you have heard what you have to hear, I will share it over and over again. All right. So you are in Matthew. I just want to read uh, uh, Philippians to you. I shared it with you the other day out of Second Peter, where, uh, where Peter writes and he says that as long as I'm in this tent... I will keep on reminding you, as long as I'm in this state, I will keep on reminding you of the word. Now, Paul comes and Paul writes more or less the same thing in, in Philippians chapter 3. Uh, you can write it down, Philippians 3 verse 1. Paul writes this, he says, Finally, my brethren, and it's obviously sister, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Finally, my brethren and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wake up. Rejoice in the Lord. That was a rebuke with love. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious. Now, that little word tedious means it's not tiresome. It's not irritating. I will not be sluggish. I will not be lazy in sharing the same things with you over and over and over and over again. 
I will not be irritated in doing it. I will not be lazy in doing it. I will not be sluggish in doing it for not to be tedious, but for you. But for you, it is safe. And I want you to be safe. God wants you to be safe. Safe, my mate. God wants you to be safe. Okay, I mustn't do that because just now people say I'm throwing satanic signs. You know, there are these religious people that uh, they're always looking for the demonic. In uh, uh, I was watching uh, 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 or saw someone the other day. There was a lady that was ministering in a specific church, which I now know. Not the lady, the church. And uh, there was some demonic manifestations happening and uh, people would come to the front and she would address the demons and uh, the demons would manifest and the people will be delivered and set free. You can actually see how they, they, there's one guy that she broke the curse over him and uh, the spirit of rage and anger and stuff. And uh, they had to hold him back a little bit and he went and he shouted at her. And when that demon came out, you could see how his countenance changed and how he, well, he went down and lying on the floor and so much peace came over him. And but now this one guy who was also a pastor, found someone on YouTube that now has an issue with this lady because now she's copying someone else's. It's a guy that influences her. He speaks into her life. He's like a spiritual father. So obviously there are going to be things that she's going to say that he has said. Now this one guy, this one pastor, now prophet pastor, now has an issue because now she actually quotes. That's not... Uh, 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 no, this other guy that's on YouTube, he's now tearing her apart, and you know, because that's not her own words, that, that guy's words. And, uh, and then this one pastor now saw what in which church in Pretoria this thing now happened, and look at the demons that's in that church. So YouTube has now become your spirit, your Holy Spirit. Shame on you. Just because this one guy has a problem with this lady, and uh, now he shares it, and uh, he's, 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 it's a spirit of jealousy, man. And, uh, oh, you must see how much demons is in that church. That church is so full of demons. No, it was people that came to be delivered and set free. That's what the church is about. Yeah. For people to come and be delivered and set free. Amen. It can happen in the street as well, but people are, usually they bring people to the church. And it's usually in the presence in the church where the anointing is that the demons manifest. I've seen it in my church. Okay, that's enough. Okay, but I, I, I want to share, you know, I, I want you to hear this so that you can be saying, oh, don't you have any? Okay, I was talking about the sign so that people, you know, okay, sorry, I withdraw that sign. So don't write me ugly letters. All right. So Paul says that I want you to be safe. So this morning I want you to be safe. And I'm not going to be sluggish. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to be tiresome. I'm going to preach the word so that you can be safe. All right. I'm going to sit. Because there's not a lot of people here this morning. So I'm just standing in front of a couple of people the whole time. So Matthew chapter 4. And then we're going to go to where we're going to go. Matthew chapter 4. I've tried to sort of arrange the scriptures that was in my spirit. So let's see how the word is going to come out this morning. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus quotes the scripture. I, I, I want to throw that in. Jesus quotes the scripture and it says, you know, when he was tempted by the devil. And uh, he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Man shall not live by bread alone. If it, if it gets cold again, you can just switch the heater on there. If it, okay. My wife says she's cold. Oh, okay. Right. Let's get rid of the distractions. Let's go on. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So everything that the Father spoke, everything that the Father said, 
Everything that the Father speaks, everything that the Father says pertains to our life. It's life. That's our life. So every word that God spoke determines the way that I live. Hello? So my life, I, that's why I, I think maybe, how can I put this? All right. Maybe this is why the word says that uh, uh, when God spoke and he said that I set before you life and death. Choose life. So I, have, I, I can choose my standard of living. Come on now. I can choose my standard of living. If I look at the word of God and I see what it is that God said, that sets my standard, not man, not man's opinion, not your religious mindset, not your poor poverty mindset. Oh, really? But the only thing that you are preaching is prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. That's my assignment. That's my assignment. Other people's assignment is different. There are other preachers that God has called to preach on faith. That's their assignment. They are faith preachers. Then there are other preachers that God uses to teach on healing. That's their assignment. But it doesn't mean that they don't speak prosperity or I don't speak about faith. There's that, there's that intermix, or how, how can you explain it? There's that mixture of what the Word says, but then there's that one specific assignment. My assignment was go and teach my people how to prosper. So if you have an issue that this is the only thing that I teach and it's taken up with God. I don't work for man. I don't work for you. God has called me. God has placed me in this calling. God has given me this assignment, not man. And what is interesting is, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. What is interesting, many years ago, when God, when God spoke to me to go and teach this, this was in 19, 19 uh, 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 just around about 1995 up to 1998 after we left our denomination in 1995, and God told us that we're going to plant a church. I didn't want to have a church anymore. And uh, I was fed up with, 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 the, with the religious system and the church councils controlling the pastor, and I can't preach this, and I can't do that. And they were in control of the finances, and they were withholding salaries and all that kind of stuff. I was done with that. And, uh, but the Lord gave me word and said, you're once again going to plant vineyards uh, in Jeremiah. You're going to plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria, and you're going to eat the fruit of what you've planted. That's good. I, I, I'm, I'm eating the fruit of what we've planted. Okay, you don't have to say amen. I know it's cold. Some, you know, jaws are frozen because of the cold weather and stuff. And, uh, but that's okay. So uh, uh, God said, you're going to plant again, and you're going to eat the fruit of the vineyards that you've planted. So, uh, 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 and, and that was my assignment. And I said, what do you want me to teach the people? He said, go and teach my people how to prosper. In the midst of poverty. But that's how God works. In the very midst of poverty, go and teach the people how to prosper. God is awesome. God knows what he's doing. But in the prosperity, I'm going to touch on faith because you're going to need faith to get to the prosperity. I'm going to talk about healing because you can be healed but financially poor or you can be financially very blessed but then poor in your health. So we're going to touch on healing. But my main calling, my main thing, is to go and teach my people how to prosper. So if you have an issue with it, take it up with God. So this is what we're going to look at this morning. All right. So now, man shall not live. So don't let any other person decide for you your standard of living. Whether it's in health. Oh, you know, God gave me this disease because, you know, if I didn't have this disease, I would not be able to teach and, and, and share with other people. You don't need to have that sickness to be able to tell people God can heal. 
You know, now that I've gone through this liver cancer, I can, you know, the sufferings that I went through, now I can share with other people that are going through liver cancer. You know, uh, 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 I can share with other people, God allowed this thing to my children to die in a car accident because now I can, I can help other moms and that who's lost their children. And, and Have you heard stuff like that? Now I can help the other moms that have lost children. God doesn't need to kill your child so that you are able to help someone else. You've got the word of God to comfort other people. You've got the word of God to tell them they don't have to be sick. You've got the word of God to tell them they don't need to be poor. You've got the, you don't have to go through the same stuff. All right? But if you've gone through it, Then get over it and again, still use the word of God. Don't use your experience. Use the word of God. Your experience is not going to get someone else through. But when you share the word of God with someone else, that is the thing that is pulling you through. That is the thing that will get them through those circumstances. The word of God. So don't let anybody else decide for you your standard height of living. Let the word of God, for man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God's word decides my standard of life, not man. And in God's word, I find I'm blessed, I'm prosperous, I'm joyful, I'm healthy. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He protects me, he prepares a table before me in the very presence of my enemies. And I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. God is my provider. God is my source. That determines my standard of life. Now, once again, a pastor. You know, some pastors, I'm not knocking pastors, but people need to wake up. Some, or preachers, let me put it on, because there are some in other denominations as well that are called dominies and stuff like that. That uh, the only thing that they teach now in these days are the Antichrist and the triple six and the end times and, and all that kind of stuff. So I heard this one, this one pastor was sharing this and uh, he made this remark. He says, he said it in Afrikaans. He said, da, le donker da ons voor. And he wasn't talking about Eskom. He said, in English, he said, there are dark days lying ahead for us. And he wasn't talking about Esco. He was talking about what is going on in the world. So when you look at the world and you look at the economy, I mean, the rand lost its value. It's now nearly 20 rand. It's been there before, I think. But the rand has lost its value. Food prices have gone up. Petrol prices have gone up sky high. Everything has got, interest rates have gone up. There are anarchy going on across the world. Rebellion, murders. I mean, look at what is happening in America. How the young people are shooting up schools and and shopping malls and kind of stuff like that. It's just crazy out there. So if you look into the world, you can say, yeah, the dark times are ahead. Depends on what you want to focus on. Dark times are lying ahead. Look at the wars that are going on. Look at Ukraine. Look at Russia. Look at China. Look at what is going on. Okay, so you, you know what I'm talking about. But that's their vocabulary. There are dark days. The same thing in it was, was when they preached the Antichrist. And this is now the last days that we are living in. And look what is happening. And I've said it so many times. Well, if these are the last days, there's something else that must happen that super exceed what, is, what the world is looking at. The world is looking at the disasters, the earthquakes and the tsunamis and the, 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 the floods that are happening and the hurricanes and the economies and the, 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 the LGBT, GTV, V6, X, XR, whatever, you know, the whole alphabet thing. That, that's what the world is looking at. But there's something in the scripture that says that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in these last days. But he quotes out of Joel, which says, and afterwards, after I've restored what was lost, after I've restored what the locusts have eaten, I will pour out my spirit. Why aren't we preaching that? 
Why are we so focused on the triple six and the antichrist and the stuff, but we are not focused on, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and lift our hands and say, Lord, here's flesh. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Oh, he's poured it out once. No, go and read the book of Acts. Every time they came together, after the book of Acts, chapter 2, chapter 3, where the Holy Spirit was poured out, the Bible says every time they came together, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they came together, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they came together, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Every time they came together, it's fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. That's why you need to come to the meetings. That's why you need to sit under the Word. It's fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Every time you sit under the wood, it's fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh. But they are so focused on the negative and the same thing now. Oh, daar leef ons donker tye voor. Okay, let's read what the word says. What does the word say? That's our final authority. What does the word say? Once again, we don't deny the facts. We don't deny the facts. But let's read what the word says. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 16. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Now this is after Jesus confronted the devil. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. It's Matthew 4, verse 16. This is for a specific person in Portugal. In darkness, have, have sat in darkness, have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. And I'm listening to this guy, to this preacher. Oh, donker tye leef ons voor, wat vir jy sê, daar is donker tye, there are dark times that's lying ahead of us, and I want to say, hey, open your eyes, open your eyes, there's a light shining in darkness, those who sat in darkness saw the light, and those that shat in the sh shat, and those who shat in the, in the, uh, in the region of the shadow, those who sat in the region of the shadow of death. You want to come and preach? You come and try and say it. Who sat in the shadow of death, light has dawned. And uh, so there are some that say, oh, I don't watch the news. I don't want to see. I watch the news. I, I want to see what is going on in the world because every time I see the news and I look at all the negative stuff, I say the light's going to shine brighter. That's my prosperity. I'm going to be blessed because the word of God says in the midst of drought, in the midst of this, in the midst of that, in the midst of darkness, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed. So I like to see what is going on in the world so that I know how bright, how much brighter the light is going to shine. Not to be pulled down and not to become negative. You have a choice. You can either let the news make you negative and fearful when you see how the food prices are going up. Or you can look at the food prices and say, my God shall supply. Or you can quote out of the book of Matthew where Jesus said, do not worry. Take no thought about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. Because your Father in heaven knows that you are in need of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, the Amplified, and His way of doing things. And all these things shall be added unto you. So food prices can go up, I'll still eat steak. Food prices can go up, I'll still buy chops. Food prices can go up, I'll still eat well. Why? Because God never takes us back. He elevates us, He takes us higher and higher to a better life. Because it's from one level to another level, and we are supposed to always be on a higher level than what the world operates on. Much higher level. Because we are from above. Not from beneath. Come on, Deuteronomy 28. We are above and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail. We are blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed all the fruit of our baskets. We are just blessed, 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 blessed. Hmm? So I, I, I watch the news. 
but I don't get influenced by it. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Now go to Isaiah 59. And then we're going to do Isaiah 60 again. Go to Isaiah 59. Now I'm going to read it out of this Bible because I don't have place in the new Bible to, to have this written down. But I've got it marked in this Bible. See that big yellow sticker there? I don't have a place in this one to put it, so. There's some other stickers over it, so. So Isaiah 59, go down to verse. Okay, let's read verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood. Now some people say the comma was moved. The comma had to be when the enemy comes in. There should be a comma. Like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up. I don't care which way you read it. Let's just read it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up up a standard against him. That word standard means this. He will put him to flight. When the enemy comes in like a flood, like we see happening in the world right now, I mean it's corruption. It's corrupt officials all across the world. I mean the news that they are spreading and how they are taking a small portion of truth and then they blow it up to get your minds all in fear. And because that's how they control it. Oh, I want to tell you this global warming thing. And uh, money is going to lose its value. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to buy and sell anymore. Because the scripture says this and the scripture says that. And uh, all this kind of stuff. And the ice caps are melting. And the, and the, the, the floods. Then we have more floods and more earthquakes and stuff. And it's global warming. And we've got to do this. And we've got to do that. It's all their agendas. They take a small portion of truth and then they begin to lie with that truth to you so that you walk in fear because that's how they control the world. Through fear. Alright? So now the word says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to raise up a standard. God is going to put him to flight. Ephesians 4, God gave apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists for the equipping of the saints and according to the Amplified. Until we all get to the same measure, the same standard, the same standard of Christ's own way of living. That's the standard of life. So God is raising up a standard. Say this with me. Make this declaration with me. Say, my standard of life and of living is higher than the standard of this world. You are from above. Your standard of living is supposed to be higher. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world and its way of doing things, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. Amen? All right. So now listen to this. So the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against Him. A standard against Him. So God is lifting your standard higher than what the world says. Isn't that awesome? God is lifting your standard of life higher. Okay, somebody, uh, I, I think that was a good place to say, Amen, thank you, Jesus. My standard of living is going to be much better. Oh, I want to tell you, the people, uh, uh, let's just take South Africa. The, you know, the people of South Africa are poorer than what they were three years ago, and there's a, the poverty is increasing. 
That's the world standard. That's not my standard. Oh, but you know, the poor. No, Jesus said the poor will always be with us. It's a choice. Not everybody gets the same teachings. Not everybody sits under the word. The only thing that they see is the petrol prices going up, the food prices going up, but there's no input into their lives to tell them, you don't have to depend on what the world offers you. Look at what the word says. So Jesus said that the poor will always be among, will be with you. But he didn't say it had to be one of you. Hello? The Spirit of the Lord will lift up. A, oh man, I can just get stuck on that one verse. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So every time there's bad news, you can begin to rejoice and say, my standard is going to be lift. My standard of life is going to be lived. Because God says that man shall not live by, 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 by a bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So here the Father through the prophet says that God's going to lift up a standard. So that is my standard of life. God's word. It's a higher life. Now, let's jump down to verse 21. As for me, says the Lord. Who's saying this? The Lord. Who's the Lord here? God. So God is saying. So now let's look at the words that God is speaking to determine my life. This is my covenant with him. My spirit who is upon you. Go wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. And my words, I'm first going to read the King James. And my words, which I have put in your mouth, and my words, you have heard this so many times, and my words, which I have put in your mouth, my words, which I have put in your mouth, his words in your mouth is the same as his words in his mouth. It doesn't lose power because it moves from his mouth to your mouth. Something awesome that just blessed me this week is this. God said, we will come and make our home with man. Am I right? So God says we will come and make our home with man. So now according to the New Testament, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is now living on the inside of us. This is now His house. So God is now living in us. God doesn't go anywhere without His power. God doesn't go anywhere. He did not leave heaven to come in his, through his spirit. We, we, we understand how this works. It boggles your mind. How can God be seated on the throne, but he's also on the inside of me? That's through his spirit. God is omnipresent. He can be where he is. But he doesn't leave home and goes to another place. He doesn't visit. He, he, there's no visitation. It's a habitation. And he doesn't inhabit anything but leaves his power outside. So the very same power that God has is the very same power that resides on the inside of you. Can you imagine that? Can you receive that? It's the same power. God didn't leave some power there and say, I'm going to just release a little bit of power through my spirit. No, he says, you will receive power. Bottom line, finish your clock. You will receive power, the same power that God operates in. It's the same power. We have received of his fullness. Now listen to this. He says, my spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth. Now you can read that two ways. It shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants. Descendants is the Lord from this time and forward. 
God said the same thing to Joshua in chapter 1. He said, Joshua, go and meditate on, the, on my words. Go and meditate on these things. And it shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. Go and meditate. So, be, so let's look at it two ways. So before you speak, before the words depart, meditate on it. Before you say anything, meditate on it. Before you make negative declarations, meditate on the word. The word shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it. Know what it is that you are saying. Know what it is with, that you are declaring. Know what it is that you are addressing. Know what it is that you say. Don't just say it. But when you know that you know that you know, that when you do speak it, you speak it with authority and power. Some people just make declarations because that's, you know, oh, whatever, whatever word. They just make it. And then they go, oh, no. First meditate on that word before it departs. Understand what it is that you are going to declare now. Yes. Understand that whatsoever I ask the Father, I'm going to get it. And you shall declare a thing, and it will be established. Meditate on what it is that you are going to declare. All right? And then it says that this word, excuse me, shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, don't let the words, my words, so the one is, before it departs, meditate on what you're going to say. The other way that we can look at it is, is don't let my words leave your mouth. Don't say negative stuff. Speak my words only. Don't let my words depart. Don't say negative stuff. Don't come in agreement with the world. Don't say what the world says. Speak my words only. Because man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Amen. Know what the Father said so that you can say it too. Amen. Now why is that important? Now listen to this. The, the, that little word depart is the, is, is the word mush. It means withdraw, seize, take away, touch, feel, or handle. So I, I, I wrote it down the way that it, that it makes sense to me, the meaning of the Hebrew words, because the Hebrew and the Greek are such rich, are such rich languages. So this is how it should, should sound. Verse 21. My words which you speak, you can go and listen to the teaching again afterwards and write it down and paste it there in your Bible the way that I did. So listen, my words which you speak shall not cease, stop, withdraw. It shall not cease, it shall not stop, it shall not be withdrawn until that which you speak can be touched, felt, handled or materialized. I'm going to say it again. My words which you speak shall not cease. It shall not stop. It shall not be withdrawn until that which you speak can be touched, can be felt, can be handled, has materialized. So you don't stop declaring the word of God until the very thing that you have declared is manifested in your life. It shall not depart. Don't stop declaring it until you can touch it, lay your hands on it, use it as a testimony and do that thing, you know. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. And you twirl around, you know those Pentecostal songs. Don't let his words depart until the very thing that you declare is materialized. Then he carries on. Now remember, the Bible wasn't written in chapters the way that we've got it. So then he carries on. He says, and descendants, says the Lord from this time. Now, verse chapter 60, arise, shine. So he says that this is what's going to happen now. My words shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall speak it, you shall declare it. So arise. Yeah. 
and shine. So arise. Because Job says, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. So arise. The Amplified. From the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Arise to a new life. Get out of your depression. Get out of your anxieties. Get out of your fears. Get out of your stresses. Get out of your worries. Arise, shine, speak it, declare it until it happens. For your light has come. Where? In darkness. You can now either focus on the darkness... Or you can focus on the light in the darkness. For light drives out darkness. And I shared it this week. There's a teaching going around. And I'm not afraid to say it. That you are, you have to or embrace the darkness that is in you. Embrace your darkness. That is in you. When the word teaches us that in Christ there is no darkness. God dwells in darkness. But nowhere does it teach us to embrace darkness. Darkness is evil. If you are in him, then in you there is no darkness. We are not supposed to be friends with darkness. And here Christians are teaching, embrace your darkness. I will not embrace darkness. I will embrace the light. I will embrace my light. God is light. He dwells in darkness. So the people that sat in darkness could see the light. Because light drives out darkness. And this is a time that the church needs so much discernment. Because there is a lot of demonic teachings that are creeping into the churches. And people are gobbling up. People are eating it up for the sake of supernatural experiences. The devil also do supernatural experiences. Trust me, I've worked with some of the highest qualified Satanists you can find in South Africa. High priests. They do supernatural stuff until you declare the name of Jesus. Then you will see which one has the highest authority. I've had books. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you how many books. It will fill a whole wall. Books that were banned in South Africa concerning witchcraft that I confiscated from a high priest, Satan worshiper. He was a high priest. Pastors that were in the deliverance ministry were fighting to try and get hold of those books that I had because I had the inside operations of how the demonic world works. And then a friend of mine went and I stored it when we had to move and uh, I didn't have a place for my boxes so he said I can store it in his house and he thought that he was doing me a favor and he burned everything. Lens is okay. But just to let you know that I know what I'm talking about when I talk about the demonic world that can do supernatural stuff. So some people are so hungry for the supernatural, they will just believe anything that you tell them. But they are too lazy to go and study the word for themselves to go and see, does it line up with the, world, with the word? So there's a mixture of light and darkness, and when you put the darkness in, it sounds very nice if you embrace your darkness. It sounds, oh, okay. No, it's not okay. Okay, so let's carry on. You think you've heard everything about Isaiah 60. The Lord says, teach it again. Arise from the depression and the prostration. The Afrikaans, the vooroorgebukte houding waarin omstandighede jou druk. The oppression, the prostration in which circumstances are pressing you and keeping you. Rise to a new life. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover, cover the earth. Does it say there will not be darkness? It says it shall cover the earth. And deep darkness the people. Now you have that teaching. Embrace your darkness. Deep darkness will cover the people. 
But the Lord will arise over you. The Lord will arise over you. When? When there's deep darkness. So guess what is supposed to be happening in the days that we are living in right now? I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And in the darkness, your light is going to shine. So arise and you shine. Go to, keep your fingers there. Go to Isaiah 45. Keep your fingers at Isaiah 60. Let's throw Isaiah 45 in there. Look what is going to happen in the days of darkness. Now again, you know, that, 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 that person says, Oh, there are dark times waiting for us. Dark times are waiting for us. We don't deny that. Are you with me? We don't deny the facts. We can see what is going on in the world. We don't deny the facts. The facts are there. It's bad out there. Our own economy, it's bad out there. And there's real darkness out there. Ask ESCOM. Not only is it spiritual, it's physical. So now you can either focus on the darkness, you can either focus on how bad everything is, how irritating it is with the lights on, then the lights off, then the lights on. And I want to tell you, we're moving to stage eight. We're moving to stage... It's irritating. I agree. It's irritating. It's frustrating. But then there's something else. We can either now become frustrated and allow frustration to make us angry, to get us upset, make us negative, because now people are losing their work, businesses are closing because they can't pay for the gas and the, and the generators and the solar panels anymore. They can't stay open for long enough because now we're going to have nine hours, ten hours, and uh, of constant load shedding, not just four hours, four hours, four, but now we're going to have six hours and ten hours of load shedding, and uh, whatever the case may be, and uh, so now, you know, be, become frustrated, and the frustration leads to negative spirit, yes. and we become negative, we become, and a negative spirit leads to anger, Anger leads to rage. People become angry. They lose their tempers. They begin to swear. They begin to, dry, you know, shoot each other. It's, it's a lot of frustration. So, or you can change your focus. Or you can go to the word of God that says that man shall not live by bread only, but by everyone. So let's look at what God says. Verse chapter 45, Isaiah 45. Verse 3. Look at what verse 3 says. I will give you the treasures of darkness. So if you are getting frustrated with the darkness, because the darkness is responsible for the inflation rates to go up, I'm not talking about the ESCOM darkness, I'm talking about evil. It's causing the interest rates to go up. It's causing food prices to go up. It's causing petrol prices to go up. It's causing everything to become more expensive, more expensive, and, and, and whatever. And, and listen, there are people growing rich because of the darkness that they create. Wake up, Susie. There are politicians. There are business people. They are whatever you want to call them that are becoming rich because it's a man-made thing. That's why they create wars. They make money out of wars. They make money out of famine. I'm not talking about drought here and when it's not raining. Sometimes they create drought. A lot of the stuff are man-made creations. Hello? And they make money out of it. Don't think that they've got your interest at heart. 
They pocket the money. And then they decide, okay, let's do this thing now. Let's create a flu. Let's create this thing. And uh, so that we can create vaccines, so that we can make money out of it, so that we can be enriched. Now there are millions and millions and millions of vaccines that are now getting destroyed. Johnson and Johnson vaccines that they have to destroy because they can't use it. But they've made their money out of it because governments bought it. Now governments are stuck with it and they can't use it. They have to destroy it because it's past the expiration date. And now those pharmaceuticals and the chief people that are in charge of those pharmaceuticals made all the money that they can. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. But listen to this. It says that I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know. That you may know that I, the Lord who called you by your name, am the God of Israel. I'm going to give you the hidden riches of darkness, of the secret places. I'm going to give you the hidden riches of darkness. I'm going to see to it that you lay hold of the hidden riches of darkness so that you can know that I am the Lord God of Israel. I am the Lord God. Now God is no longer a respecter of person. There's no more Jew, no more Gentile. All God's promises in Christ is yes and amen. So the promises that He made to Israel is the same promises I can lay hold of today. So Isaiah, I can lay hold of that promise. I'm part of it. So I declare, I say, ooh, darkness. There's a standard. God's raising up a standard of life that is above what you think you are creating. I'm blessed, I'm wealthy, I'm prosperous. I will declare it until that very prosperity and wealthy and healing and joy and peace can be touched and can be manifested in my life. It will not depart from my mouth. I will keep on speaking it and declaring it until there's a manifestation of what I have declared in my life. Mm. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Now that secret places, that, that, that refers to a secret storehouse. God says, I've got a storehouse that is a secret. And I will supply from that storehouse. Go to Matthew 6. Verse 19. You can write it down. Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Does that now mean I'm not allowed to have treasures? No, he says do not lay it up for yourself. You see, there's a difference in being a giver and a holder. People that are just gathering everything for themselves. And they are not rich towards God. So listen to what he says. He says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Now remember what Isaiah says. He says, hidden riches of secret places. Those secret places is a secret, is a storehouse. Now do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves Treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Because it's a secret. They don't know where that storehouse is. To the thief, he can't get to that storehouse. He can't get to the treasury. Now, just listen to this. Where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. Then in Matthew, where is it? In Matthew, where Jesus says, In this manner pray. So when you pray, go into your room. 
your storehouse. That word room refers to a Jewish storehouse. I did the teaching. I'm not, I'm not going to go over the teaching again. Where Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room. And we have this image of we go into the room and we close the door. The actual thing is, when you pray, go into your storeroom where your treasure is. Malachi 3. Bring all your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse. And then will your Father in heaven not open the windows of heaven where your storehouse is, where thieves cannot steal it, where rust cannot destroy it, where moth cannot eat it up. Now go into your storehouse, go into your room. So go into, when you begin to pray, in the spirit realm, look into your storehouse where you have laid up treasures for yourself through your tithes and your offerings that you've sowed into the kingdom of God. And then you close the door. In other words, close the negative influences. Close the door to all the negative stuff. And then you begin to pray to your Father. And you begin to, to dispense. That's your dispensary. And you begin to dispense all the blessings, all the glory, all the power, all the provision, all the wealth that you have accumulated in your treasury, in your storehouse, through what you pray and declare until it's manifested on earth because then Jesus said, so this is how you're going to pray. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So now I get from my dispensary, I get from my storehouse, I get from my secret place where thieves cannot get to it because they don't know where it is. The devil thinks he knows where it is, but he doesn't have an entrance to it. There was a time when he was the accuser of the brethren, where he had access to heaven and accused us before the throne room of God. But then he got kicked out. Now the Bible says he's going to and fro on the earth. He's got no access to heaven anymore. He's only got access to this realm. It's the only access he has. He's only got access to this realm. He's got no access to the throne room. So he doesn't know where my, where my treasuries are, where my secret places, where my storehouse is. Are you getting this? So when you pray, begin to see from which angle you are praying. Are you praying from earth, trying to get to it? Or are you praying from a place that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places and you begin to release from there, you release the stuff? Or are you trying to get the stuff released from here? No, if you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, you declare with authority and you get it released. Your will be done on earth. Your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And I'm seated in heavenly places. So I'm seated in a place where there's blessings. I'm seated in a place where there's prosperity. I'm sitting in a place where there's health, wealth. I'm sitting in a place where I'm healed. I'm sitting in a, seated in a place where there's joy. I'm seated in a place where there's peace. I'm seated in a place where there's power. I'm seated in a place where there's authority. Get back to Isaiah. 60. But the Lord will arise over you. Are you there still in verse 2? And His glory will be seen upon you. <coughs> his glory will be seen upon you. Now we know that it doesn't mean that now you're walking in the street Shining like a light bulb. Especially now with the SCOM thing. That, we know that that doesn't mean. So that glory that will be seen upon you must be something else that's going to be seen upon us. So in other words, if you study the word, you will know that the glory is the wealth. The blessings. The prosperity. So the world will see exactly what he spoke in Isaiah 59. You keep on declaring it 
until you can touch it, until there's a manifestation, until it is seen upon you. But then some people have such a poverty mentality, their whole vocabulary, their whole attitude, their, everything that they speak is just poor. I can't pay this. Oh, we're struggling. I don't have money for petrol. I can't do this. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know where we're going to get money for food. We don't have food in the house. We can't drive. You know, we can't pay the electricity. I don't know how I'm going to pay. The whole declaration is negative. Again, we don't deny the facts. So begin to speak what God says. My God. My God. My God. My God. And you find the scriptures. It's restoration time. We just sang it. That's why I wanted to sing that, that first song again, Speak Jesus. Only speak Jesus. Did you see it says that I will speak Jesus in the darkness. I will speak Jesus over my family. I will speak Jesus wherever. I will speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. And His glory will be seen upon you. So in other words, there will be a physical manifestation of something upon your life that others will see. God's blessings upon you. God's favors. They will see God is with you. Keep your fingers at Isaiah. Go to John 15. I will keep on preaching this until Jesus says it's enough. I'm stuck on Isaiah 60. John 15. Well known scripture. Verse 5. John 15 verse, from verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who So who carries the fruit? The branches. The vine is the main stem. And out of the vine grows branches. And on the branches you get the grapes. So I am the vine. You are the branches. So who's going to carry the fruit? You are. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides, stays, is rooted in me. And I in him. Bears, no, 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 sorry. Bears some fruit. Bears little fruit. Might bear fruit if they're lucky. Bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they burn. Verse 7. If you abide in me, if you remain, if you stay, here's the requirement. If you stay, if you remain in me and my words remain, if my words abide, if my words stay in you, you will ask what you desire, not what you need, what you desire. And it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified. Arise, shine, and His glory will be seen upon you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. So arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. But don't let these words depart from your mouth. 
Let his words abide. Exactly what we read in Isaiah 59. Until the very thing that you declare is manifested, you can touch it. It can be seen upon your life. You keep on declaring, I'm wealthy. I'm prosperous. My needs are taken care of. I will lack nothing. No good thing will he withhold from those who walks uprightly. He will not withhold anything from me if I am walking in righteousness before God. Oh, man. Is this too much? I'm so charged up now. I want to tell you, I want to go and buy a Jack XF, not a Jack F type sum of cash now. Because it's time for a new car. My wife said last night, she woke up during the night, and uh, then she fell asleep again, and when she fell asleep again, she dreamt that I bought her a red car. I said, yes, it's an F-type Jaguar. She says, no, it was another car. I said, no, you want an F-type Jaguar. She says, no, I don't. I said, yes, you want an F-type Jaguar. She says, no. I said, yes, you do. You want an F-type Jaguar. She says, no. I said, you want to. You just don't know it yet. Yes, you want an F-type Jaguar. Yes, you, my wife wants an F-type Jaguar. Yes, my wife. Okay. <laughs> but that's how I feel like now. This last couple of, well, I don't want to say couple of days or whatever, but I've been declaring for a few times now, is, Lord, I, I, I declare debt-free. I declare that I will be debt-free. This house will be paid. We bought this house with the kingdom in mind. This house will be paid debt-free before the time. Debt free. Every debt that we have, it will be paid in Jesus' name. Because it's even in the prayer that we pray. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. That word, our debtors, means those that gave us the debt. So I forgive the bank for giving me the debt. So forgive us our debts. Forgive us that we went into debt. And forgive the, our debtors. Forgive those. We forgive those that gave us our debts. I said, God, I'm going to declare this debt freedom. Debt freedom in Jesus' name. No more. No more. There's something that I want to do that I can do. But I've decided I'm not going to do it. I'm going to trust God to provide. Because he said, whatsoever. He said, anything that I desire. And he knows my desire. I said, I'm not going to buy that thing and own on it and owe on it. I'm going to trust you to provide. If I have to use this thing until it, whatever, I, I will do But I'm trusting you for a better one. You can now imagine whatever it is. Are you with me? You will ask what you desire. And it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So let's, let's jump back to Isaiah. And his glory will be seen upon you. Then verse 3. And his glory will be seen upon you. So by this my Father is glorified. So if his glory is seen upon us, if his provision is seen upon us, God is glorified. So why would we not want to be blessed and prosperous? If by, by being that, God can get the glory. Hello? Oh, I see you drive a new car. Yet. Let me tell you how I got it. And you give God the glory. I've got seed in the ground. I've sowed for it. I've declared for it. I've declared the word of God. Do you know how much power? This is now you testifying to the person that's now jealous because they see you have a new car or, oh, you got, is that a new dress? Or uh, have you just bought it out? Whatever the case may be. You begin to give glory to God and you begin to tell them, let me tell you how I got to this place. The word, the word, the word. You shall declare a thing. The word. Let me tell you about what I'm being taught to my church. Let me tell you what the word of God says. You give God the glory glory whether they like it or not they made a remark and you just responding to their comments they opened the door 
We just sang the song, Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the business place. Jesus at your house. Whenever people make a remark, use it as an opportunity to talk about Jesus. Hmm? Let's finish. I'm not even, this is just the introduction. And his glory will be seen upon you. In other words, there will be a physical manifestation of God's provision. And, 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 and I love the words of the song. That's why I said it's a declaration because it falls in with Isaiah 60. Arise, shine from the depression and prostration. Because in that song, speak Jesus, it says, over your anxieties, over your fears, over your depression. Verse 3. Now look what will happen. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. So the unsaved will... Now, 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 unsaved doesn't just mean the sinners. Unsaved can also mean those whose minds haven't been renewed yet. They're still walking with the spirit of jealousy. Oh, this prosperity thing. You're unsaved in that area of your mind. Oh, this wealth. That's all that I hear. You're unsaved in that area of your mind. You're unsaved. And then you have the totally unsaved. Are you with me? So they will come to you and say to you, like they did with one of our partners, showed up and said, you've got another job. You are smuggling with something. How is it that you can afford this? And then when he begins to tell them about sowing and reaping, they become upset. You see, they begin to stir up that spirit of religion, that stingy poverty mentality spirit. That's a manifestation. That's a manifestation of a poverty mentality. It's a demonic spirit. Now you begin to tell them how you got where you are because you know I've got seed in the ground. Let me tell you about seed time and harvest. Let me tell you about sowing in the time of famine. Because now you begin to teach them and people will come and tell you, but I don't have money to give. I don't have anything to give. You see, that's your mindset because there's no word on the inside of you. You have no word on the inside of you because man shall not live by bread only but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So now you're making declarations. I don't have the money. I can't afford to sow. I cannot give the church anything because the church just wants my money. So what are you doing? You're cutting off your own blessings because what are you sowing? Weed. And then some of you put it in your pipe and you smoke the stuff. It's called weed. And then you go, wow. And then you do it more. And you say it backwards. Wow. Hmm? But that's okay if they take offense. You know what you know. That you know that you know what you know. And you know what it is that got you to where you are. And you know that it, what it is that's going to get you where you're supposed to be. It'll get you to where you're supposed to be. You might not yet be there, but don't stop doing what the Word of God tells you to do. Because in doing that, there's life. Don't be intimidated by the seed, the size of the seed that you have to sow the amount. Don't be intimidated by it. But be motivated by the harvest. But I've been sowing now for so... There you go again. How long still before... There you go again. So now you are not motivated with joy by what is waiting. You are now being distracted by what you haven't gotten yet. It's called a distraction. I know. I've been there. 
Sometimes the devil wants to pull you back to that place. You have to resist him. Hmm? Man, I wish I had more space here. That's why we need a building. We need a big. I want to run around and walk around and be like a, like a, a, a what? And a, a prophet with a teaching and evangelistic spirit on him. Sometimes I feel like I'm an evangelist, stirring the people up and not just prophesying. But this is a prophetic word that I'm giving you. Let's finish. We can carry on next week. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. So they will become and begin to ask questions. How come you're not stressed out about what is going on? And the easiest and the quickest way to cut off the blessings of God in your life is to get drawn into an earthly, worldly conversation with unsaved people. And it's so easy to get drawn in. Because now you are the only one standing amongst five other people and they're all talking about how negative it is, what is going on, and now you are the only one that are standing there and disagreeing with what they see as facts. But what a testimony for you to say, hey, listen, these are all facts. We don't disagree with it, but we will deny those facts the power and the authority to determine our lives. I will not allow that stuff to determine my standard of life. I will not cut down. I will not cut back. That's not my standard of life. As a matter of fact, God is raising up a higher standard of life. My standard of life is just going to the next level. Right now, what you are declaring as negative, I declare that that will become my next standard of life. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood like that, God's raising up a higher standard of life. That's not my standard of life. That might be your standard of life. That's not my standard of life. Speak Jesus in the workplace. Speak Jesus in the street. Speak Jesus. Why are we so ashamed? Hmm? And now the devil, and, and, and you need to do this. You need to go, you can go to my, to my Facebook page. Let me throw this in. You, you can go to my Facebook page and just scroll through my Facebook page. I shared it. The government is now busy with a hate speech bill. Where the very things that I'm telling you now to declare with, if someone now, if that bill passes, then that can be as hate speech because you're making that person feel bad. That person can accuse you of hate speech and you can go to jail for eight years. So it's trying to silence the church that we are no longer allowed to preach sin. We are no longer allowed to confront people. We are no longer allowed to testify. We cannot talk to people about Jesus because just maybe you are going to offend that person that's an atheist and that person gets upset and go and lay a charge against you at the police station because you stepped on that person's toes and you can go to jail for eight years. The devil is trying his utmost to silence the church in South Africa. Wake up church. You've got until tomorrow until tonight, 12 o'clock to go and fill in and sign that thing. The devil will fail dismally. The devil will not have the last say. That's why we need to arise and shine and be forceful and be vocal and speak out. Because man shall not live by bread, but by every word. Whatever we declare, whatever we speak, whether it's in a conversation, whether it's at work, whatever we declare, we release that awesome power of words into the atmosphere. And we give God something to work with. Are you with me? We're sitting with so much authority and power on the inside of us. God in us. Christ in us. The Holy Spirit in us. So don't just declare the word for the sake of declaring. 
Understand the authority that you release when you speak the word of God. And you keep on speaking it until the very thing that you trust in God for manifests in your life. But here's the mistake that a lot of people make. I'm going to close here with that. Here's the mistake that some people make. It's the moment that they get the breakthrough, they stop declaring. Because they now got the breakthrough. No, you keep on declaring in every area of your life because there's a higher level. God wants to take you to a higher level. So don't stop declaring a breakthrough. You start declaring for the next level of breakthrough. Hello? So let me summarize this. Is this too much? So let me summarize this quickly for you. Paul writes, he says, I will, it, it, I, I'm not going to be lazy in reminding you of this. I'm going to keep on reminding you because I want you guys to be safe. He says, for me to write the same thing, so for me to preach the same thing, doesn't irritate me, doesn't tire me out. Because I want you guys to be safe. Then in Matthew, it says that those that sat in darkness saw a great light. And those that sat in the shadow of death, oh man, the glory of God's rising up over you. So do not let these words depart from your mouth. Don't let it mush. Don't let it depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. Day and night, your children, your children's children. Until the very thing that you have declared, you can touch it. Until it's manifested. So therefore, I want to put in there between that last verse, verse 21, and chapter, verse 1 of chapter 60. I want to put in there, so therefore, arise. From the prostration in which circumstances are pushing you. From the circumstances in which people are pulling you down into. Shine. For your light has come. You are no longer in darkness. And God has read hidden treasures. Hidden riches in those dark places. And he will cause it to come to you. He will cause those things to flow to you. He will cause those things he will, he will get it to you. The mistake that we sometimes make is we, we, want, we, we, we try to figure out how is God going to get it to us. God's got so many. God's such a creative God. I, I, I love to, when, when, we, when we are in the mall here or uh, whether it's in Tiger Valley or Canal Walk or whatever, my wife likes to go and walk around. I like to go and sit in the coffee shop and just watch the people. I like to watch people. I like to watch people. And you, you see all the different kinds of people, different sizes. Some are small, some are big, some are tall, some are short. Some dress this way, some dress that way, some walk this way, some walk that way. You look at their facial expressions, this one looks like this, and the other one looks like this, and the other one's go totally confused. I, I like to watch people, and I, and I see all the different, the, how God has made us different. God is such a creative God. And now we try to limit God how he's going to get the blessings to us. All that he says is believe. All that he says is abide in me. And let your words abide in me, in you. Let my words abide in you. You abide in me. My words abide in you. And then whatsoever you desire. What you desire. Because you are rising above the darkness. So the greater the darkness, guess what? The greater the standard of life. Oh, so if it gets worse, it means I must be, get more blessed. Mm -hmm. So the worse it gets, the greater the blessings. That's what you and I are going to manifest, if you can believe that. 
if you can believe that. But how? Don't worry about the how. That's not your responsibility. That's God's responsibility. Amen? He did it to me in a fish's mouth. He can do it anyway. He can... Anyway, I, I, he can put it in a fish's mouth. A rat can run up with... I, I don't care how he does it. I don't care how he does it. Come on, close your Bibles. I want you to close your Bibles. And then we're going to do something. As you put your Bibles down, there in our venue and portable, there in your house, I want you to do this right now. The word says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. So, I want you to rise and declare, I'm shining, for my light has come. Come on, stand on your feet. Say, I'm arising above my circumstances. And I'm going to shine so bright, it's going to blind the other people. They're going to see the blessings. It's going to be manifested. Because God takes care of me. I'm his child. I'm his son. I'm his daughter. I belong to him. He has riches and treasures in secret places. And he knows how to get it to me. I don't have to stress, worry, have anxieties, sleepless nights, fear, whatever. Because my God shall supply in Jesus' name.